Okay guys, so today we are back and I want to go through how to create skyboxes uh, in Unreal Engine. So there are a few ways to create skyboxes. Uh, usually I use three types, uh, either a, just a white emissive kind of material or we use a HDR uh, type of image file or an EXR type of image file. So I'll teach you all three ways to create these skyboxes and discuss the pros and cons of each. And also I'll discuss a bit about material instancing. So when we create our sky, it's useful to know a bit of material instancing. So uh, with all this knowledge, we would, we would get a, a very nice skybox uh, that we want to use for our scene. Okay, so let's go. Hey guys, so before we proceed to create our skybox, I just want to go through a quick concept on material instancing. So this concept is usually a bit hard for designers to catch, especially if you don't have a background in programming and you are, you are usually a, a interior designer or, or a, a, a architect and stuff like that. It may be, you may require a bit of knowledge on programming, just very basic knowledge. So uh, in my experience uh, teaching this Unreal Engine class, a lot of people can't catch this concept very quickly especially if if you are not that IT savvy so I will put it uh, go through this a bit slower step by step so you can understand but it's a very useful tool for us to understand and use okay so let's continue so let's take a simple white material which I've assigned to the wall okay a white material is made up of RGB color 111 and let's say I want to change this color to a red material, 100, okay? When I change this uh, red material, I need to save it, okay? And when I save the material, what happens is it will recompile, okay? So every time I make changes to the material itself, it will recompile. So for a simple material, this is fine. It doesn't take a long time to recompile. But if you are building a very complex material, it will take some time to recompile. Okay, and also if I want to make a change inside the editor, it's a bit hard to see sometimes, right? So what we can do is we can create a material instance and we can change it real time without a, uh, without having to recompile. So how we, how we do that is we convert this base color to a parameter. Let's call it a base color. Okay, and we save it. Then we create a material instance, okay? So we can create a material instance and when we assign this material instance, what we can do now is we can change this real time, okay? So when I change this, the colors here, it will reflect, okay, uh, on the editor itself. So this is very useful, not just for colors, but let's say uh, we're talking about the UV maps. Okay, how, how big and small and how many repetitions a, a, a pattern has, you know, stuff like that. Then it will be very useful to, to just change it on the editor itself. Or if you want to rotate your skybox, you know, this will again be useful as a parameter so we can see the rotation real time without having to make changes and recompile and change and recompile until we get a good rotation. You know, so so this is why it's, it's really very useful to have a material instance. So the next step, I just want to teach you how to make a simple white emissive kind of sky. Uh, if uh, you follow us on our YouTube channel, the previous tutorial where we do our first import, I've shown you how to do it. But let me just uh, show you again. Um, so a, a, a good white emissive uh, sky will produce an effect like this. So this is uh, uh, just searching for some videos uh, on Unreal Engine and uh, this is uh, an example of a white emissive kind of skybox. So basically it's, it's just pure white. It creates kind of like a hot afternoon kind of effect. You know, so if you are doing a, a Scandinavian uh, kind of uh, interior and you have smaller windows, uh, this is, I think, quite nice and quite suitable. So it's not really suitable for this particular project because the windows are pretty big. So a, 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 a full background is needed. But if you are looking to create something of this effect, then it's actually very simple. And 
So I'm going to show you how to do it. First of all, uh, we should have a sphere. So let me see if we have the sphere. Okay, so we'll use the sphere as a skybox. Oh, I already have. So we'll use the sphere as a skybox. Okay. And then uh, again, we multiply it by 500 times so that it will envelope our project. Okay, and uh, make sure that the car shadow is off. Okay, so let's just create a new material called called sky white emissive okay so for skybox we always use the unlit uh, shading model and two-sided because this is so that <clears throat> it doesn't uh, kind of create shadows so we only use emissive colors okay so we use a constant tree and set it to white Okay, and we use a constant to control the brightness of the white material. Okay, so usually I just use 5. We can multiply it. Okay, and set it to the emissive color. So it's really very simple. We, of course, can set it to an instance. So base color and brightness. Okay, so when we create a material instance, we can then assign it to the sphere. Okay, so, so that's a white emissive. Of course, now I'm in unlit mode. I haven't built my light. Uh, not sure if we can really see the effect, but if we pump up the brightness, yeah, so you see if you pump up the brightness things go dark uh, so maybe 50 would probably be good I don't know we can adjust this later when when we have done a full light building but at this moment this is how we create something like this for this okay so let's move on to the next type so in this next part, we're going to create a skybox made up of HDRI images. Um, so first, I want you to go to this uh, link. I'll put this link in the description portion. And I want you to download the Barcelona Rooftops uh, HDRI file. This is quite suitable for our project because you know, our, usually a loft like our project is located like a penthouse kind of style or area. So so if you have a cityscape you know this will make a very good um, kind of background for our project so download this Barcelona rooftops and when you open it there should be a few files inside there should be a HDR file a JPEG file and a environment HDR okay so once you uh, download with that we can continue so I'm um, actually only interested in these two files the hdr files okay so we'll use this as our lighting for our lighting and we'll use this for our skybox okay but before we import uh, let's just create an exr out of it we will open it with photoshop okay so and we just save this as an exr file okay okay i'll name this okay and no compression and once you are done with that let's go ahead and import all these files okay so I just import these files put it in desktop right so as I'm importing again there are three files one is exr one is uh, the 3k one and one is the environment so usually I'll use this environment one for lighting and use this 3k uh, HDR for the skybox okay so you will see that it's a bit blurry you know uh, when you import this file as compared to the EXR is a bit sharper okay so what you can see is of course it's imported in 3k uh, pixels for the EXR but but for the for the um, HDR is only 512 by 512 by 6 so this is the same for 
any files they are bigger so let's say you have something that uh, you download something that is 8k okay when you save it into an exr file it will import in 8k uh, resolution whereas for the hdr it will remain as 512 so so here comes the pros and cons of using a hdr and exr okay so you can mitigate this a little bit by uh changing this to let me see this uh ah there it is mid gen settings to no mid maps okay so when we change this it becomes sharper okay but still this is limited to 512 512 by 6 so uh, um a hdr will have maximum size of this an exr you can go further bigger uh, usually 8k is the is the one that I use for exr but but then again uh, a HDR file is a lot uh, the, the colors is it pops up a lot more than uh, exr so I'm not sure if we can actually see it here we, we, we can't really see the difference but there is a difference okay in the way the uh, the background will look so especially those when you create a sky background you know you, there is this a higher range for hdr file to store the light information so so pros and cons actually so um usually i'll just use an exr type but i'll teach you how to create both of these sky boxes as they are created differently okay so let's move on to create a hdr sky box so now let's create the sky box okay i'll call it sky underscore hdr underscore master maybe so uh, again uh, let's set it to unlit and two-sided okay i'm gonna create the uv side because uh, you know to create rotator and stuff like that then we will create the material side okay um what i meant was let me just put in the hdr file because hdr um you will need a uvw input okay so Let's create the UVW input. First, I want a rotate about axis. Okay. So use this node and then um, let's call it call constant tree. And we want it to rotate about Z axis. Okay. So we'll assign this to rotation axis. And then we'll create a constant and call it rotation angle. So this is controlling how much rotation there is to our HDR and then just put a pivot point of zero and I want to call out a world position node okay and then we add it into the world position itself all right and then we normalize it set it to the UV okay then you get a nice HDR skybox but we want to add in a bit of uh, enhancement to it so first of all to multiply so one I want to create the the tint so you know maybe I want to add a bit of warmness to the skybox I can let's change it to 111 okay and convert it to tint so if i want it to to make it a bit you know sunset kind of feel i can you know by adding a bit of orange to it okay but for the time being let's just put 111 and then i want to add a emissive constant this controls the brightness okay value of five convert and call it emissive power or maybe just call it brightness okay and save it then we create a material instance and assign it to our skybox you will see that we get the Barcelona uh, rooftop and then we can just simply play around with the rotation until you get the one that you like okay so maybe this is just something like that okay maybe i want to add a bit of brightness too bright 
and just a bit of tint sunset tint okay so that's our hdr skybox okay and now i will teach you how to do an exr one let's move on okay so the next one is uh creating a skybox using exr exr is um a lot easier to handle because an exr file is treated like a normal image file in unreal engine so uh, how i'm going to do the rotator is is uh, i'm just using a texture coordinate and then uh, i will add a constant tree constant tree and then rename it to a uv rotator i take the red channel and a green channel append it together and then add it onto the texture coordinate you know so so this these notes uh we will also use them for other materials such as our wooden floor and stuff like that to to create the rotation and movement you know so i'll show you more when when we do materials but the rotator uh we just attach it to the uv of the exr file and then the same thing goes to the tint and the brightness okay and connect it to the emissive color so this is a lot easier and then of course we create a material instance uh, assign it to the to the sky and so the rotation we are using just the red channel so the red channel is the horizontal rotation of course the green one is the vertical rotation which we don't really need at this moment okay so that's the exr and the hdr so again it's, it's up to you which type you want to use i think uh, in this instance the hdr works quite well as well doesn't look uh, too blurry but as you can see even with the no mid map settings if comparatively the exr is sharper right uh, so it's really up to you which one you want to use like if you are using an exterior scene with only the skies, maybe a HDR would be more useful. But in an interior scene where the background plays a big part of the scene, I think an EXR would probably be more useful. So I think that's all that I have to go through uh, for skyboxes. In the next lesson, I will go through more about materials. We will start creating materials for all our objects in, uh, in this scene. And then after that, we will discuss about lighting. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. And stay tuned. So before we end, I just want to share a bit more on how you can support the channel. So first of all, um, all the PowerPoint files that we use in this tutorial, you can download it. So when you download the PowerPoint files and any project files that we give to the channel through Gumroad, your email will be um, captured by us so we will send some marketing materials in the future if you allow us to do so of course you can choose to opt out but this will help us in our marketing efforts of course um, the final UE4 project file uh, it will be for sale as well so if uh, it is it is priced at a usual tutorial cost fee but this is absolutely not compulsory so if you feel you want to support the channel you can get the ue4 project file um, for a price so all these links uh, as we are preparing for the youtube uh, videos we will slowly add all these files into our gumroad page so some are not ready yet some are already can be downloaded so you can refer to the youtube description for the links to where to download these project files.